Hello guys, welcome to the second episode of Surviving Mars. I hope you guys enjoyed the first episode, because I did see a lot of positive feedback there. However, I know the episode was not perfect, and today, we're here to improve that. I know there are some obvious issues, and hopefully with every coming episode, it would only get better and better. Now, last episode, what we basically did was we set up the basics of this game. We set up the basics of what we need to send human life onto this planet. However, this episode, we're going to continue that. We're going to make sure we can build a dome, and uh, we can send humans here next episode. Now, I don't know what I'm waiting for. I'm just going to click load game, and I'll see you on the other side. Hello guys, here we are back for where we left off last episode. Now before we begin anything, I just want to give you a brief overview of what happened. First of all, we launched our first spaceship right over here to the first landing spot on this planet, and we were able to secure enough fuel to let it be launched back. And hopefully the same will happen with this spaceship. As you can see, it's almost completely full. I think we can send this back. Something else that happened is that we set up our water, fuel, oxygen and concrete production this is exactly all the resources we're going to need today to build our dome of course we also have our drone hub here and our sensor tower but something i did realize is that this drone hub does not encompass that much of an area as you can see our water deposit our water deposit that we found last episode which is right over here it's outside of the range of our drone hub so what i did was i ordered a resupply Instead of ordering a whole rocket, I ordered one of these little supply pods. And what these supply pods did was it, it brought me two drone hubs. It could just land right here. And what I learned is that the, the little supply pod, it actually just breaks, as you can see there. And then we can salvage it for resources. So let's salvage that. And that will give us our two drone hubs. I think what I want to do, I want to go to the build menu. And, want, and I want to set it up in a more central location. As you can see, we have a drone hub here. I want to build right here. Our dome is going to be right over here. Our water deposit is going to be right over here. And I want it to encompass all of that. So we want to put it in a very central location so that it can also see everything over here. And I think that this location, right over here, might be perfect. Boom. What's this? Meteor shower in 16 hours. So I do remember hearing that there are going to be some kind of storms. There are going to be some kind of natural disasters. And I guess the meteor shower is one of them. And I guess what's happening is our sensor tower over here, it is tracking that. And giving us a warning. I don't think we can really do much against this meteor shower. So we're just we're just gonna live with it. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to reassign all these drones. So let's take all of these drones. Oh here we go. Here's the notification about the meteor shower. The region is about to experience a meteor storm. Buildings directly hit by meteors will be in need of repairs in order to function again. While well, pipes and cables will get destroyed. Rovers hit by meteors will also need repairs, while drones may become irreversibly damaged. Ooh, so we really have to watch out. But I don't think we can really do much about it to stop it. Okay, and what then I can do... I can put drones in control over here. What I do need to do now, is I do need to connect it to some power... So let's just quickly build ourselves a wind turbine over here, and a large solar panel. Now what I have learned is that in the research, what we have is an upgrade called Autonomous Sensors, which sensor towers need no longer require power maintenance, and I'll tell you why that's good. Let's look at some of the other research, because, you know, there's no reason not to set this up. Generate 100 research per soul for each RC Explorer. That could be quite useful because that could then help us research this more. Yep, let's go get that. Receive a one-time grant and one million dollar funding. I don't know. Because that's like a one-time grant. We don't really need money right now. Let's look at something else. Apartments. 
That's for when we're gonna build the dome and farm. Produces food. I think that's gonna be necessary. Let's see what this is. Non-medical service buildings. Service buildings no longer require workers and operate on 100 performance. Wow. That is quite useful. We're gonna start researching that. Something else we need to do is, as you can see here, we have do not have any sector scanning right now. As you can see, we scanned all of this last episode, but of course we need to set up some others to scan because we do want to make sure that we can have some more inhabitable area. I think the next thing we have to do is we have to launch this back because it really shouldn't be staying back here. So let's click this. Let's click return to Earth. We have to say goodbye to friendship number one. It's going to pop up down here and we're going to see it traveling back to Earth. I think the next order of business is to destroy this building right here. As you can see now, this drone hub right here is uh, making all of these drones work. And it encompasses everything, so we do not have a need for this one. As you can see, it's been destroyed. Soon enough, when we have the upgrade for the autonomous sensor tower, we can destroy these two. But not for now. Okay guys, I think the next plan of action is to scan some anomalies because we haven't been really doing that. So RC Explorer, let's go scan some anomalies. And RC Transport, I guess you can go gather some resources. But now let's get to the main objective of this video. The dome. As you can see, there is a self-sufficient dome here. I have realized that and that does come with all the basic resources like water production, and uh, uh, an oxygen production. But I think what I want to do is set up this basic dome. Because, no, I, I see that as kind of cheating. As you can see, this basic dome, what it has here is it needs 80 concrete, which we do have, 20 metal, which we definitely have, and 10 polymers, which we also have. So we can start building this. We can start loading all the resources, and then that's going to allow us to build this dome. However, then it needs consumption. Power, air, water. And we do have all of that, but we just need to connect it to all this. But without further ado, let's start building the dome. Now what's going to start happening, as you can see, these little robots, our little drones, are going to start gathering all the resources and going all the way back and starting to load it in. That's going to allow this dome to be built, but I think it's going to take quite a while, because look at how slowly they're moving. So you know what, I'm going to leave you guys for now, and I'm going to see you back when this dome is built. Hello guys, I am back. It did take a bit of time to build this dome, but as you can see, we now do have our first dome on this planet Mars. This dome did take a bit of resources, as you can see. It didn't really take it down that much, but now as you can see it says right here, no life support. That means that this dome needs to be connected to all the essentials. That includes electricity, that includes water, that includes oxygen, and that's what we're going to be doing in this episode, because we need to make sure that humans can get here. However, another thing that I have started to notice is that buildings have started to malfunction. As you can see, they... Let's read this. One of your buildings has malfunctioned. Malfunctions can be caused by lack of maintenance, resources, or environmental hazards. It can be repaired by drones if they require maintenance for resources present in the area. However, to repair these, we do need this metal, which we, in fact, do not have. As you can see, all of these are broken and they need metal. So something that I've decided to do is we have decided to send down a resupply rocket. This is going to carry some of the basic resources. We don't really need any more prefab buildings, but we're going to carry down some electronics, machine parts, polymers, and food just in case our passengers need that when they're coming down. Let's just get a bit more of that. We have a lot of funding. And this is going to come and give us some of those essential resources, because as you can see, we are running very, very low on them. So let's launch our rocket. And when it comes down, we'll be able to fix some of these. Now something else that has happened is I've started to be exploiting this water, underground water deposit. As you can see, it can be exploited by a water extractor, and I have started building it, but of course, I don't have enough machine parts. 
we built up all the foundations with the water towers, but as soon as we get this water extractor up and running, we can connect that straight to our dome, and then with that, we can have the water inside of it. But for now, because we do not have the water extractor set up, what we're going to do is we're going to connect these two water tanks, which are right now do have stored water, and we're going to go and hook them up to this big dome we have right here. Ooh, look at that. Sector I4 scanned. 65 metal, which isn't a lot. But then there's 13,000 water. I don't think we're going to be running out of water anytime soon. Okay, guys. So what we can start doing now is we can start connecting all those essential resources to our dome. Okay, so let's start connecting this up. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get some power. Now, as you can see, for every other thing here... We have created its own power supplies. We've created our own power supplies here, over here, which we can now destroy. Salvage those. And so I think that's what we're going to do here. We're going to create its own power supply right over here. We're going to have three solar panels. And then three wind turbines. I think that's going to create enough power for this to work. I think we should actually do five wind turbines, and the reason for that is because wind turbines uh, can work all day, while the solar panels only work in the morning when the sun is out. And this all connects to one power cable, and that runs all the way and connects to our dome. So as soon as all these are bu built up, we can start getting power to the dome. As you can see, our rocket cooperation number one is here. It's ready to land. Let's just land that down, and that can help us start repairing all of this. And, ooh, even more is breaking. But, that can also help us build our water extractor. Which, of course, means, ooh, power. I completely forgot about that. So, let's set up some wind turbines over here, too. So, wind turbines some solar panels, uneven terrain. And another large solar panel over here. And then of course we'll connect that to one power cable. Let's connect that straight over there. I hope this is in the range of the tower. It is. So our drone should be able to build all that up. Yep, there we go. And that can allow us to start getting our water. Now, something else I've seen is that this apparently has a more stored waste rock. So we have to build up another one of these large dumping sites nearby. Just because we need somewhere to put the waste rock. Okay, now that we got our power running, this seems to be good on power. But now let's look at some life support. Domes have, been, have to be connected to working supply of oxygen and water with pipes. Colonists will not be able to survive within the dome if life support is not secured. The storage for water and oxygen is also recommended. So now what we have to do is hook all that up. Let's get our pipes together. Life support pipes. Here we have our oxygen tank. We need to hook that up all the way over here. Oh, it has to go around. See, so let's build it up here. And then let's go all the way around. Here we are, we've connected the oxygen. Now what we can also do is connect our water tanks because right now we do have some water stored down and I'm pretty sure we could just connect these two up just right here. And then what we can do with our new tanks is we can actually hook these up too. And so now we've got everything hooked up. And we should be able to see this start working. As you can see, power 15, oxygen 1, and water 1. So we've got this all working. Ooh. Cooperation number 1, which just landed, is already ready, ready for takeoff. As you can see, our fuel refinery is working quite well. So I think the next thing we have to do is launch this up. But that's going to be at the end of the episode. Because right now, what we have to do is put everything inside. Let's look at what we have for the dome. 
So everything here is necessary for life inside the dome. As you can see, we have all this nature decorations. We have all of these dome services like space bar, diners, infirmer, infirmary, open air gym, casino complex. These will all provide services for our members of the dome. And what this will do is it's going to allow them to have some of these basic things like space bar and diner. They help with the food, infirmary, medical checks, open air gym, exercise, social. Then we have homes, education, and research, living complex, nursery, playground, school, research lab. All of this is very important. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away right now. And I'm going to make sure that everything inside of this dome is necessary for that human life. So I'm going to see you guys in a few minutes. Okay, I am back, guys. I put all of the necessities into this dome. Let me just give you a brief tour. Uh, as you can see over here, we have a living complex. This is actually where our um, colonists will live. This has, has 14 living spaces, which I think should be plenty for how many we're actually going to bring here. Then we have two hydroponic farms, and what these do is they actually produce the food. I have brought down some food in this uh, rocket ship. However, I know that that will not be enough and they need some production. Then we have an open air gym, because this will provide them not only with a place to socialize, but to get some exercise. And we have a research lab. We only need one because this will this will help us boost our research. But we don't need a lot of jobs going into here. Then we have one grocer. What this grocer does is it actually sells the food, so I can take it from this farm all the way to the grocer. And we have this little park back here, so that they can experience some nature when there's literally no rate nature around. As you can see, these will need jobs, and that's what we're gonna have in our next episode. As you can see up here, passenger rockets. When you're ready, you can invite the first colonist to Mars. Launch a passenger rocket from Earth and land it near one of your drone domes. The rocket will carry some food supplies, but you'll have to secure power, oxygen, water, and living space in advance. We've already got that. We already have everything connected to the dome. It's working quite nicely. Ooh. While digging in the dirt, a drone has stumbled upon a crashed supply pod, almost entirely buried below the sand. Okay, the pod cannot be identified as its hull is too burnt and the black box is missing. We discovered several blueprints of unknown purpose inside. Your team stares at the strange designs and is trying to make sense of them. You decide to join in. But clearly, the part designated as O1K64 goes into power couplings here. And Eureka, you know what this is? I don't even know what these are. Tribo electric scrubber, subsurface heater, MDS lasers, and shuttle hub. I have no clue what these are. You know what, subsurface heater sounds like it could be useful, I'll take that. Okay, this is this is all working out very nicely. Why aren't these building? Okay, they're going to be built next. As you can see, we've got our dome pretty set up here. And next time we can launch our humans here, and they can start life on an alien planet. However, I think that is all for today, guys. We're going to launch this rocket, Cooperation Number 1, back up to Earth. It's ready for takeoff. And with that, I would like to thank you so much for watching. I would like to thank you so much for being here with me. If you haven't watched the last episode, remember to check that out. Also remember to like, subscribe, and comment what, what you would like to see next time. Uh, because that really does help me. Also give me any feedback if you have any. But without further ado, I'd like to say thank you for watching. And goodbye.